Hey there, what does 6,599 miles per hour look like? At first, I thought there was a mistake. I didn't really see anything. Watch this very carefully. The high-speed sled facility in New Mexico has evolved from 600 miles an hour up to nearly 7,000 miles per hour. Watch some incredible footage of its amazing history. Once you're strapped in and we're ready to go, everybody else has to leave. And the rider's all out there by himself uh, everybody else is in the blockhouse quite a distance away. They start giving me a countdown over the loudspeaker and the sirens are going off, you know. It shows you how much guts he had, but he'd be sitting there looking down the track. And at the end of the track, uh, we usually had an ambulance and his Cadillac, and he knew we were going to wind up in one of them <laughs> at the end of the run. If you imagine hurtling down a track at the speed of sound and slamming to a stop in less than a second, the, the forces that that puts on the human body are just unbelievable. Um, Stat broke ribs. Um, he damaged almost every part of his body uh, in these runs, and he made these runs over and over and over again, knowing what was going to happen. On his sled run, and by the way, I was the, uh, the chase pilot. I was flying an aircraft when he made that sled run back in 1955. I actually flew the airplane right alongside of him, and that was one of the most phenomenal uh, events that I've ever witnessed. Uh, here a man went uh, almost 614 miles an hour. He knew exactly what physiologically was going to happen to him. He knew that he was going to get a horrible beating, a life-threatening uh, beating, but he, he knew that this research needed to be done. And he established the actual limit to deceleration for a man. Dr. Stapp pulled an astonishing 46.2 negative Gs on his final runs at Holloman his body momentarily weighing in at nearly four tons as he was crushed against the straps. And I can tell you that uh, as the G's got higher, I uh, started practicing dry, dressing and undressing with the lights out. In case anything really happened to my eyes, well, I'd at least be in practice uh, taking care of myself. <laughs> uh, I had toe red out and couldn't see. Just like the picture that you saw. I can say that none of it was habit for me, and I'm so very pleased that it was survivable. But if it wasn't, well, at least we would have done our best. Dr. Stapp would recover from his early morning rides none the worse for wear, but his frequent encounters with senior Air Force management, Stapp referred to them as the mahogany desk crowd, would leave more permanent scars. Well, he was, he was tenacious and he never gave up. And uh, if he believed in something, he went out and he, he got it done. To ensure the safety, security, and reliability of the United States nuclear weapons stockpile, Sandia National Laboratories conducts extensive modeling and full-scale testing. This video shows one of the many tests Sandia conducts using an inert unit to ensure our nation's nuclear weapons are safe, secure, and reliable. Four Nike rocket motors accelerate a massive steel and concrete target down Sandia's rocket sled track. The reverse ballistic configuration allows the test team to stream sensor data out of the test unit through the orange cable bundle, which is routed to a hardened mobile instrumentation unit that records the test events. 
The test unit is suspended from above to allow target impact to be representative of impact conditions. Safety is paramount. Operations are remotely controlled from a hardened bunker. All possibilities are planned for. Specialized emergency response teams stand by. Split launch in T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. The massive target is accelerated. Down the track, into the test unit. Moments before impact, flash bulbs illuminate the camera view. The event itself is only a few hundredths of a second. Sensors, gauges, and quantitative high-speed imaging systems provide data for the supercomputer models. At these impact speeds, almost nothing remains. The test was performed successfully, capturing all data as planned.
The Holloman High Speed Test Track 59,971 feet 18,279 meters Owner, Department of Defense Operator, U.S. Air Force Controlled by Air Force Material Command Condition Operational Built 1949 In use Present Events Rocket Sled Speed Record Garrison Information 846 Test Squadron The HHS TT currently holds the world's land speed record for rocket sleds set in April 2003 at Mach 8.6 or 9,465 feet per second 6,453.409 miles per hour.